nothing beats Ohio State. Making sure they're set on the court and for that next step off the court. And I've made so many beneficial connections. Players like OSU volleyball Sydney Taylor tell me name, image, and likeness, commonly called NIL, is changing the game for Buckeye student athletes and players across the nation. At first, I thought it was crazy. But now the defensive specialist is seeing the NIL impacts from individual to team deals. Do you think that there are enough checks and balances in place so that, you know, when student athletes are doing these deals that it that it's fair? It's definitely a big a big gray area, I think, depending on who you're working with. One you never know, and I think Ohio State has really made it clear, like, ask us for help. NIL is new and still in many ways unknown. I started to dig deeper into its impacts, tracking the money. NIL deals taking student athletes perhaps to unexpected locations. These Ohio State basketball stars like forward Justice Suing. You want to get a picture in us here? Meeting Columbus City School students at Lifetown Columbus inside the Lori Schottenstein Chabad Center in New Albany. They're very unique, they're special, and uh, when we go out on the court, we'll have them in mind. The players visiting Lifetown because of a deal with the foundation. Founder Brian Schottenstein explains how it works with businesses and then the players. As I started seeing a lot of schools in the South have these collectives, I'm like, we have to have something in place. Are there enough checks and balances in place to make sure that students are, you know, getting the money that they're owed and that things are done fairly? Yeah, I mean, uh, we've had a great relationship with all of our student athletes. Um, we work with their managers or their agents or whoever is representing them for their NIL. Um, and we haven't had any problems at all with um, any of the deals we've done. He started the foundation with Cardale Jones. Still the Wild Wild West. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely a different day and age when it comes to college athletics when, when I play. Um, NIL has taken a huge um, uh, effect on recruiting. Um, and just, I think it's all about really protecting these student athletes. I took questions to the university. Carrie Hoyt says she talks with students frequently about all this. Do you think the NCAA needs to provide more guidelines? You know, we don't have like true insight to what those contracts look like until a lot of them are executed. Um, so I think there have been situations where, you know, we've picked up on some language in a contract that maybe wasn't ideal. And we're talking about big money, according to their NIL impact report. I think in our first year, it was right around 3.2 million. The guidelines are very um, vague and, and skewed, I would say. Um, I think that ultimately, I think we all hope for some federal legislation in NIL so that there's an even playing field state by state. Um, I think that enforcement is really critical. Navigating the classroom, court, and that new NIL landscape. As a student athlete, that with NIL, it's super impactful on what we can do in our community. I did reach out to the NCAA. They note the NCAA is a member-driven organization, pointing me to a recent interview about NIL. I'll put that link online. Now, according to the university's NIL impact report for the 21-22 school year, over 320 student athletes had at least one deal impacting each sport. I put a lot more on our website, like more of our interview with Cardell Jones. On your side, I'm Haley Nelson.